beautiful people, welcome back. So let's go ahead and have a nice little conversation really quickly about how we ended up where we are right now, and then we'll get into the video and kind of how this came about. So first thing I wanna mention is I spent probably a half hour, 40-ish minutes getting everything I needed situated for today. I had a video I was gonna do, and I was really pumped about it, right? So I come in here, I get everything all situated, and then right as I, I I could not be more on point when I tell you I am going, I am reaching, actively reaching to turn the camera on to begin recording and I break, somehow, I break the cord that runs from my monitor to my camera. And obviously, as you can imagine, that creates like several situations, right? Like number one, what the hell do I do? Because you guys know I can't see. Like I, right now, I literally have no idea what you're looking at. I see a tiny blurb on a tiny little monitor that's this big about three feet away, but I have no vision without my glasses and I can't see. And I'm like, well, clearly <laughs> this isn't gonna work out for makeup application, right? Cause I have to make sure I'm in frame and yada yada. Um, so the makeup application was out. And then it occurred to me, what a better way to rectify a horrible morning with so much wasted time, energy and effort uh, than with a fun story, you know, close out a week, have a good laugh, whatever. And you guys can obviously let me know down below if you'd like to see more of these. But before I get into this, I would like to reiterate, I cannot see myself. I cannot see what you're, like anything that, I'm like squinting right now to try and see it. I, ca I can't. So if you're seeing something weird or something looks out of place, I have lipstick on my forehead, I don't know. It's just what it's gonna be for right now. We're just gonna have to roll with it. But anyways, none of that really matters because I'm just gonna like set the scene and roll in with my story. And I don't know if anybody else is gonna find this funny like I do, but it's rolled around in my head. It's something that happened last week. And I just, I can't, I can't get it out of my head. So let me really set the scene, all right? We're currently sitting in the year 2020. And I don't know if you know this, but there is a literal hell breaking loose around us all, right? So I'm trying to do my due diligence, my part, to like stay away from people, not go out, stop the spread, you know, like I'm, I'm trying to like be a good doodle. Because as several of you know, I have like a ton of autoimmune diseases, I'm severely autoimmune compromised in general, and it's just better if I stay away from everybody and you know, like try to live. So I do my due diligence, I look around, and I find that there is a little grocery store um, near me, like near where I live, that you can go to and you can get up and go early, and they're being really, really strict as far as how many people are allowed in and what time they open and, and just, you know, really rotating and being super duper careful. And I'm like, okay, that's where I want to go because I know foot traffic is going to be a lot lower. It's going to be great. Something else that I think is also important to mention is that when I read this, I read it on their website, which was on the internet. Okay. On the internet. I am a 30 year old person. Okay. I know I use the internet very frequently. That's going to become very relevant later on in my story. Just wait for it. When I got to the store, I saw that there were already a couple of people in line. So of course, you know, I parked my car. I am about 15 minutes it's early, so I know it's going to start to pick up quickly. I want to get out, go get in line. And when I walk up, I see that there are two women, and for the purposes of what they call themselves, I'm going to call them senior citizens, because again, that's what they refer to themselves as. I'm not, I'm not about ready to try to pick a fight here, because let me tell you, that just happens later. Uh, so I walk up, and I see that there's two of them already standing. One is about six foot from the door. The next one is six foot back from her. And from her, I stood six foot to the side, because otherwise I would have been in traffic. So I start, you know, making this loop. But from what I can see, I'm the third person person in line and I stand up and I just kind of, you know, get situated and no sooner do I look up, I am met with the gaze <laughs> of two women that would just as soon suck my soul out of my ass through a straw <laughs> and then have me standing in this line. They were like, like I could, I could feel, <laughs> I could feel the hiss of hatred coming from their eyeballs and I'm like, oh, maybe they're having a bad day. Like maybe they just got in a fight. I I don't know. I just got here. Like, I'm just trying to be a nice little doodle and like get my apples and leave. Like, I'm just, I'm just trying to be good. Well, I needed more than apples, but you get my point. I'm just trying to get what I need to leave and like go get the hell out of here. And next thing I know, I look over and I see this older couple, again, like a senior couple, and they're walking up near the front of the building. Like they're walking up to the girl that would have been first in line. And I know that I just set a really nice scene for you guys. And that was just for you to understand like the environment I was in, but this is where it gets dicey. So I'm standing there and this older couple, walks up and they start talking to the woman that appears to be first in line. And they're like, oh, hey, you know, are you are you in line here? Like, where does the line begin? And that sort of thing. And the nice woman that's at the front of the line tells them, well, actually, I'm second. The woman that's sitting in her car is first, like she was here before all of us, uh, but she wanted to sit in her car for whatever reason. So she wanted to sit in her car, which would make me two. This woman here is three, points to the older woman in front of me, skips over me, skips over Paige, who's standing right behind her, and then goes, so that would make you four. So you'll, yeah, you'll you'll be fine because they were only allowing, I think it was five people in the store. And at this point, I'm like, oh, 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 so, so, 
can you see me? Because it's like I'm not even here. And I'm a little bit upset <laughs> because now I have walked up, I've kept my distance, I've smiled, I was like, you know, I, I was very like, if you wanted to ask me a question, like I was welcoming, but to just like stand there and act like I'm not even in existence <laughs> while you're speaking, I was a little upset. So after standing there for just a second and kind of gathering what I wanted to say, I just really politely, you know, I kind of like put my hand out, not like I'm gonna touch somebody, but just like out into the abyss, because again, there's multiple feet between everybody. And I was like, excuse me, um, I'm also in line and I'm pretty sure like this, you can be here if you're immunocompromised too. Like it's, it's autoimmune and senior citizens. And the woman at the front of that line, I shit you not, <laughs> turns around, looks at me like she's been waiting, like she has been saving up this ammo the whole time. And she goes, no, it's only for senior citizens last I checked. So I very politely, of course, because I'm, I'm trying to be, you know, as respectful as I can. And I'm trying to just keep the peace. I don't want to be one of those people that like it, it allows this this, this whole thing happening around all of us to make me an asshole. Like, I don't want to be that person if I can help it. But at the same time, like, I'm getting very, very frustrated because from the moment I pulled in this parking lot to now, it's like just this little volcano of like spewing demonized, you know, ageist hatred. And I, I don't, I don't know what I can do to like fix the situation. And, and I'm a, I'm like a fix the situation kind of person. Like, that's just kind of how I roll. And, uh, and I'm just, I'm trying to be polite. So I in turn respond with, well, I saw it on the internet. Like I looked on their website. Did did you by chance look on their website or, or, or where did you hear about it? Much to my surprise, no murders were committed, especially my own. And uh, she just responded with a very quick, very tight lipped, no, I didn't look on the internet. I just saw a flyer. And so then I just politely responded and I said, well, we can ask the people at the door, like absolutely, you know, if that's, if, if you're apprehensive, if you feel like I shouldn't be here, I totally understand. Um, and, and again, we can check if that would make you more comfortable, but if that's the case, I would like to be included in your count. Like I would, I'm, from what I can figure out, just off of what you said, I'm number four. So I would just like to, you know, kind of mention that and let you guys know. And at this point you would think the story's over. Like, okay, Paige, you know, handled it and, and they're, they're mad, but they get it. Like she, she said, or peace, whatever. Oh, nope. The woman in front of me wants to, uh, how should I say, expound on why I'm here. Maybe she just doesn't know what an autoimmune disease is. Like, I, I don't know. Um, but I made it very clear, like, I'm I'm severely immunocompromised and that's why I'm here. And and I, I thought that that would be, like, the only explanation I needed to give. Um, however, I was wrong. So I keep getting flack and, like, feedback. And these, these two women in front of me, they start just kind of having this little discussion amongst themselves about me, but, like, also, so, you know, very cognitively avoiding the fact that I'm standing right here type situation. And then I heard a car door open and I realized person number one, who was actually first in line, the woman that's been waiting in her car this whole time, she was actually sitting in her car with her window down. So she had been listening to this entire conversation. So now it's like the enforcer's getting brought out. That woman swings open her car door, she gets out. And I guess the best way that I could describe this woman to you is like a Diane Keaton, longer hair, but like so polished and the kind of beauty beauty that's so effortless, but so uh, almost like striking. She was just, she was so beautiful. Everything about her was so put together, but again, effortlessly done. And she had this air about her that was like, I command authority, but you don't know why. Like she was, <laughs> she was that kind of a woman. So as you can imagine, based on this picture that I've just painted you of this woman, as she's getting out of her car, it attracts attention from the other people that are standing around. And at this point, there's probably like six to 10 of us. I don't know how many were behind me because I was just trying to look down and like stay the course, but she gets out and she's very easily, she just kind of attracts the attention of the people standing there. And so she gets out of her car and you can imagine my surprise when she adjusts herself and, you know, gets all of her stuff, gets her purse and she looks looks at me dead in the eyes, which no one else here has wanted to do because apparently I'm a demon. And she looks at me and she says, so did I hear this right? When I, when I, you know, I was just listening through my window, you said you have an autoimmune disease or uh, you're compromised in some way. And I said, yes, ma'am. Cause again, I'm like a big ma'am, sir, until otherwise told not to. I was raised with that respect your elders and yes, ma'am. And yes, sir. And that's just like, that's where it's at until they tell you no. And then she followed up with a very quick one, two punch of, so that's why you're here. Yes. Is because you, you know, you need to shop your compromise like the rest of us. And, and you need groceries. And I and I said, yes, ma'am, that, that's why. I'd also like to mention that while she's asking me these questions, while they are short and concise and to the point, she does have a way of almost progressively getting like louder, but not louder in a yelling sort of way. Like she's just getting more commanding. So by the time she gets to her last little part of what she wants to say, the entire like section is listening. The people in their cars are listening. Like obviously I'm listening. And most importantly, I believe what she was getting at is that the, the women in the front of the line, they were listening as well. 
well because she concludes what she was, you know, kind of getting at here by saying that uh, I believe everyone in the world right now is upset and um, everyone is on edge and it's very easy to see that. But the reality is that everybody in this parking lot is compromised. And I would venture to say that you as an autoimmune compromised young woman versus myself as a healthy senior citizen, from how I'm seeing it, you have just as much a right to get groceries as I do. And if it's a problem, you can take my place in this line and I'll wait outside because last time I checked, we all had extra time on our hands these days. So no one should be upset. Ooh, guys, when I tell you it was drop the mic, like you could have dropped a pin in that parking lot. Oh my God, it was so good. And, and I just stood there and I'm like, Dude, she just stuck up for me. She just stuck up for me so hard right now, and I am so pumped. I'm over the moon because, of course, you know, the, the fifth grader in me wants to walk up to the first lady and be like, ah, suck it. But of course I don't because I'm mature. Evidently, I didn't feel very mature, but I was, you know, exhibiting signs of maturity. So I turned to her and I said, well, you know, thank you very much for that. And, and I said, I, I agree. I know that the world is is in kind of a funky place right now and everybody's upset. But I said, I think that I think that they kind of understand, you know, and that everybody here is OK. I think maybe they were just they didn't they didn't understand or nobody got why I was here because I am younger. And me trying to be like that person that plays it off. She wasn't buying it. She goes, I don't know about that, but I'm glad that it's worked out. And I'm like, damn, <laughs> like I was trying to give everybody here and out. And this woman is just not having it. So, okay, everything like diffuses, everything goes back down. So then the, the women at the front of the line, not the nice woman that just got out of her car, but number two and number three, they turn to the couple that's standing by the door. The couple that walked up all this time ago is still standing there together. And the woman says, just so you know, they're only going to let one of you in. And the woman, the wife of the couple says, well, why do you say that? And she replies with, well, because it's only one person per household. That's why none of us brought our husbands is because only one person per household can go in and five people at a time. So obviously two people from one household can't go in. And boy, did that cause a problem. Oh my God, you guys. I have never seen in a more angry, pissed off couple in my life, any age bracket, just so pissed off. So the older woman, like the, the wife of the couple, she breaks off and comes over to us where we were like standing. Now again, we are standing six feet apart. This woman comes over and stands right in between me and the woman in front of me. Now I'm no math genius here, okay? But six foot right right there. And if you stand in between six foot, you are now causing there to only be three foot in between each of us. And we are being very careful as to not cross contaminate and we are doing our job. So this woman walks over and as she's standing directly between the two of us, which first question, why are you standing in front of me? Like you should be over here behind me, but that's neither here nor there. So she, uh, she stands there for a second and I look at her and I'm kind of like, because, like, I, I don't get it, obviously. And the older woman that she is now three feet from also turns to her and goes... And we're both just like, <laughs> what the hell? What are you doing? So this woman stands there and she goes, Oh, wait, I, ca I can't stand here, can I? I should have to stand in the middle of the parking lot, right? Being so sarcastic. And then I replied, trying to still be polite. And I said, well, I think the middle of the parking lot's farther than six feet. You only have to go six feet away. <laughs> like, I'm trying to be nice, but my God, it's six feet. You got one rule, okay? Six feet away from me. That's it. That's all it is. It's six feet. I'm not even saying you got to be six feet behind me, six feet in front. I'm I'm not even giving you a direction. I'm just saying it's only six feet. You don't got to be so dramatic, okay? And then she goes, um, it's just so hard to keep track of all these rules. All these rules. All these rules? What rules? I'm sorry. What rules are we, what rules are so hard to keep track of? The one where you have to stay six feet away from me or, uh, oh no, just the one where you have to stay six feet away from me. Why is, I, uh, I, like guys, when I, I'm I'm getting hot right now because this woman acted like it was like she'd never. It's just so many. Like no, that is the whole rule. It's six foot between you and between me and between you and anybody else. And that's it. Okay, those are just the rules of of the day. All right, just live by that. When you go in the store, they have different rules. But my rule is just stay six feet away from me because your ass and my ass, we don't need to be touching. All right, just get out of here. So she proceeds to take a couple steps back. Meanwhile, her husband is sitting up by the door, still standing as close to the building as he can. Get as close to the entrance as he can get, realizing not only is he not going to get in before all these other people, because I tell you what, that lady in first, she's about ready to hip check his ass into next week. That ain't going to happen. So he uh, he's standing there and the woman comes outside, like the, the woman from the store, and she says, oh, you know, good morning, everybody. So we all kind of know what the rules are. And he's just standing there listening. And the woman says, you know, like, are, are you with someone? And he points and says, yeah, that's my wife over there, you know, and, and she could tell because he was trying to be sneaky and like get in the building. So she asked him first up, first thing she said, are you with someone? Well, you're not going to lie because good luck 
lying. Everybody here is about ready to turn your ass in because you're kind of starting to make a scene, right? So he says, yeah, that's my wife. She's over there. She'll be, she'll be going in, you know, fifth. The woman being very polite from the store replies, well, it's only one person per household. So you'll have to, you know, either wait out here, wait in the car. Like that's up to you. But just so you know, it's only one person per household. And that man who's obviously well aware of the rules because he's now been told them like two, three times at this point, And he says, this is bullshit. And everybody's like, what? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> How do you figure? And he says, this is bullshit. Not only can I not go in, but she can and points to me. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> all right, sir. Now it's on. And everybody, everybody in the parking lot, which at this point, now there's probably 15 to 20 because there's several people behind me and you can only go in the store five at a time. Okay. Five at a time. So these people are going to be here for a while. And now they're all looking at me and I'm just like, yep, cool. Let's just, Keep it going. I thought we'd resolve this, okay? I thought we've already had this conversation, but that's fine. And what he was doing was he was trying to deflect and see if they would kick me out of line because I'm young and I shouldn't be here. And he was just trying to see if he could get rid of me. And then as a reward for his good investigative behavior, he would get to go in with his wife or something. I don't know. But uh, he says it and the woman doesn't even flinch. She doesn't even blink. Sir, it doesn't really matter who else is here. Only one person per household. So it's up to you, you know, where you go. But you just so you know, like if your wife comes in, you will have to wait out here. So, you know, Know, basically get away from the door okay she's trying to politely say so then she you know turns to us and she says all right and the first five of you can come in and everyone is like doing that like I don't want to run in the store but like I'm gonna run in the store and the woman from her car the one that got out and defended me she actually walked in behind me and she said I want to make sure that you don't have any issues like I want to make sure that you get in and I said well thank you like thank you so much for being so kind and she said there's no reason not to be right now like this is this is unbelievable I'm like Oh my God, look, this woman was just so sweet to me, okay? So I get into the store, moral of the story, you know, I go around, I do my shopping, nothing overly eventful happens. I pass them as I'm going down the aisles. We exchange some smiles with me and just that woman. The other people don't smile at me, man. They, they glare at me like I do not belong in this world, but that's fine. I get it, they're mad at me for whatever, for existing. Okay, so, uh, so I go through, I check out, and as you check out, like if one person leaves, one person is allowed to come in, that's how they maintain their five. So as I'm checking out, I look down, just like down the aisle right here, the one that's immediately to my right and I glance over and who do I see that snuck in but the husband and he's walking with his wife and I am instantly irate okay I'm instantly just like are you kidding me but I'm not gonna say anything okay because I'm not a snitch I am not a tattletale I'm just trying to like I'm basically just trying to do my time and get out I just come here I got my groceries I'm trying to get out it's not my job it is not my job to like police the situation but oh my word, I couldn't believe it. Because not only does that mean that he lied to tell somebody else because they switched the door girl, the, wom the woman who opened the door wasn't the woman who was standing there. So she had no idea and she let him in. So not only did he lie to whoever this new girl is, but he also took someone else's spot from coming in the door and he cut in line. And he lied and said that he would have been the next person in. Like this guy is a piece of shit, I'm sorry. I don't, there is, there is a pandemic happening. These people are waiting outside to get their groceries. Your wife is already inside and you are so unbelievably selfish that you can't just let her shop alone what is this like 1940s you don't think she can do it she doesn't know how to handle a credit card like i just i don't understand i i don't understand what the problem is but again i'm just gonna walk out the store do my business and uh, it all concluded when i took my car i took my stuff and as i'm walking out the door of course there's a line of people that want to get in and out of all of them i glance the faces they are all seniors which i just know i'm waiting for it i'm waiting for the comments and as I'm almost to my car, I think I've almost made it. I've almost just got my groceries, got them in my car. There's not going to be a problem. And then that one older woman speaks up and she says, boy, I hope we all look as good at our age as she does. She definitely looks like she belongs here. And I might be misquoting like a couple words because she did have a face mask on, but the general gist of it was that I am clearly too young. I don't belong here. And instead of just calling me out and being done with it, she would rather just mock me and, and mock the, the fact that I'm not old or there's something. I don't know. And I stood there for, and I like stopped in the parking lot and I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm about to drop this bag and we're going to have a conversation because I have been spoken down 
down to so many times today. <laughs> like, it is 7.30 and I have already been spoken down to by like 15 people and I am so sick of it. And I'd also like to mention, by the way, when I was in the, the store paying for my groceries, I double checked with the cashier and I said, I just want to make sure like I was allowed to be here, right? Immunocompromised, I am allowed to be here, right? Like if I have autoimmune diseases, lung stuff, like it's okay, right? And she says, oh, absolutely. It's it, That's why we put the senior citizens and you because you're both super high risk. And uh, and I said, well, thank you. I just, I wanted to clarify. And she asked me why and I responded with, well, <laughs> people weren't exactly happy that I was here. And, uh, you know, a couple of them were getting a little bit angry. And she said, well, I'm sorry that people don't understand that autoimmune disease people need food too. And I'm like, look, I'm not here to start a fight. I just wanted to make sure like I was allowed to be because if I legitimately couldn't have been, I would have apologized to all those women because I, I thought that I could be, but I could, so I was good. So as I'm standing there in the parking lot now, realizing that this woman is making fun of me, okay, which is just like, it, it's infuriating on several levels because not only like, A, why are you doing it? But also you're telling everybody else in line that it's okay to just be a jackass. Like, don't set that tone for the world, but whatever. So I'm standing there, I'm having all these feelings and I was just like, you know what? Just get to your car, just get to your car, put your shit in the car and be done with it. And when I tell you that was the hardest walk to my car I've ever had. Ooh. And I think the real kicker of this for me was that I walked up there with like this kind, like will do, can do spirit and like ready to be a good person and like have conversation or, or be sweet to people or whatever. Like whatever the day was gonna bring, I was gonna carpe diem the hell out of it. I was like, I was having a good damn day. And I needed just a handful of groceries to get me through another week. That was all I needed. Like I didn't need a whole lot. There were people going in there. They needed a cart full of stuff. I was only in there for a few things. These people were acting like not only did I have no right to be there, I had no right to exist to breathe, to, to need food, whatever. But I also, whatever I was taking, it was like their precious resource and how dare I touch it. And I'm like, y'all, <laughs> it's a store, okay, first of all. Second of all, I only need a couple things and I'm not trying, like, I'm not trying to like invade on something. If it said seniors only, guess where I wouldn't have been? There, okay, I wouldn't have been there. I guess there's a couple reasons that I wanted to tell this story. Number one, it was funny as hell, okay? The day that Paige almost got into a fight <laughs> with a bunch of senior citizens and you know, I it was so hard for me because I want to be, like, I try so hard. I want to be a nice person. I want to be that person that stuck up for me. Like that woman that got out of her car, that made a point of asserting herself and saying, look, this is ridiculous. Like you guys are being ridiculous, but she said it so tactfully and didn't call anybody out. And she was just so poised. Like that's the woman I want to be. So I like, I say this to encourage, you know, not only you guys, but myself, like be that woman, like be that encouraging sweet woman. But also I thought it was funny as hell because I'm just like, y'all are so mean. <laughs> Like, I would, I don't think I could ever look at a, at somebody who's in line to get groceries during a pandemic and be like, mm, I don't think you should be here. And then just count around you and act like they're not there. Like, I, <laughs> the utter, like, the whole situation for me was just so baffling. All I could think of was if I ever have the opportunity <laughs> to tell this story, I have to tell it because you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe this. What, what group of senior citizens takes on a 30 year old girl just like standing in line for doing nothing? <laughs> like, who, what, 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 what kind of, what kind of CNN special is this? Okay, <laughs> what is happening? You guys, that's the end of my story time. I hope that you liked it. I hope it was at least somewhat entertaining to listen to. Uh, you can let me know down below if you want to hear these type of things more often. I know that today, it, like, the content's way different and I know it, um, I just can't see. <laughs> like, truth be told, I can't even tell if there's a little red dot on that camera. I can't tell if it's recording. I have no idea. Could have just talked to myself for 40 minutes, not a clue. So we're gonna hope that it's all here and that it's like somewhat in frame. Um, but again, I wanna hear from you down below. What do you think? Have you had any funny interactions or um, goings on during this entire thing? Um, and if so, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear your stories. Like I've done in the last few videos, I'd also like to invite you to leave any um, thoughts, opinions, comments, as far as content goes down below as well if there's something you want to see, um, something that you're curious about, a new release, anything like that, leave it down in the comments. At this point, I always mention um, Instagram and Twitter. If you don't follow me on those, they'll both be linked down below. And if you're wondering what is on my face, how I got here, all of that, I actually did an IGTV for it. I believe I split it up or I will split it up into two and do skin and then eyes. So if you'd like to know what this is, how I got here, all of that, you can check me out on Instagram. Again, they will be over there um, probably over the course of the next couple of days. And I think that that is everything. You guys, thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me. If you haven't subscribed yet, please be sure to do that as well. I do put up new videos three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they go up bright and early between 6 and 7 a.m. my time here in good old Northern Michigan. So subscribe, turn on your post notifications, and you guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching and for listening to my story times from the Senior Center. I hope you guys all have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.